Financial, Phil, Phil McCoy from Ameriprise Financial and the various group of financial advisors. It sounds like you are en route somewhere, Phil. I am. I am on my way to work. I'm running a little behind today because I sat up all night long and watched the black and gold have an offense. <laughs> and then I was excited and I couldn't go to sleep. So I'm playing things forward. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little behind today. So I'm on the road. Did you skip the gym? I did. I did. I, heck, I didn't go to sleep until about two thirty. I was all fired up. I was watching the post game and everything. <laughs> well, it was a good win. The four hundred yards of offense, thirty-seven points. It was a good win. Even Dylan. Even it Dylan. Even Dylan's got his headphones on this morning. He's he's ready to congratulate you, Phil. I know. We talked a little bit before, and I have to give Dylan credit, even though he's from the evil empire of the Baltimore Ravens. He's always very humble. He's never rubbed any losses in my face and he's never poo-pooed to win so i have to give dylan a lot of credit because I'm, I'm not the same i'm not the same type of man well dylan like, i don't know dylan fess up man don't what do you mean dylan doesn't poo-poo the wins you got to hear that sports mix show when he talks about the steelers <laughs> well he does i mean he doesn't to me anyway first of look if the ravens would have lost yesterday i probably would have called it like 7 15 this morning like hey dylan what's up buddy what's going on how'd your weekend go i would have been all over it but he's never done that to me well, even like, though, um, like, even with the Colts, he didn't do it with the Colts. with the old Joe Flacco. He didn't rub it in my face. I got to give him a lot of credit. Well, I'm Irish, so I try to keep the negative feelings, like, bot bottled deep inside me for as long as possible for, before they have to come out. Drown so, it with alcohol. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe not that, but, but uh, no, you know, to, to a Steelers fan that I, uh, till I like, you know, one of my best friends, Steelers fan, and uh, I got my good pal Phil McCoy here, I can, I can be happy for them that they are happy now. I may not be happy about it, but I keep that to myself as long as I can. The Ravens play tonight, by the way. They do. I'm actually I'm a little nervous about it. Maybe if Vita Vea is uh, is out you know, for the nose tackle for the Buccaneers, but I'm kind of expecting a shootout. That's in Tampa, is it not? Yep. How about them commanders? I actually watched sports ball yesterday. Without Jaden Daniels, too. I actually watched sports ball. He was cleaning my office. He got hurt on what, the first series or something? Probably. I don't know. But, yeah, he only ran two plays, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And they still had a big day. Marcus Mariota, for goodness sake. And they're, they're a duplicate of each other. They play the same way. Both run well. Both can pass the ball well. So, And forget that but Mariota was the one of the top draft choices, uh, what, about seven, eight years or so ago? He's had a very good career. Heisman winner. In college. Heisman, yeah, it's been, it's, he's hung around a while, but he's been a mediocre professional quarterback, though. Yeah. Right? I, you know, I, I'd be interested to see if, if Daniels had to be out longer, what would happen if they had to actually play an NFL team instead mm -hmm. of the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> well, that's a good point. You mean like playing the Steelers? They did have to they <laughs> did get away with playing the Panthers yesterday. So the World Series is set now. You've got the, the Yankees and the Dodgers. This is the 12th time, I understand it. And, and as a Pirates fan... Uh, this is the best thing that can happen for baseball every year is if the Yankees and Dodgers with their $300 million play, payrolls played for the World Series every year because at some point along the way, baseball would stop the stupidity of their economic system and put in a salary cap and revenue sharing like every other league does and give everybody a chance to win based on your ability to develop talent, not your ability to write big checks. So the best thing that can happen for the, the knuckleheads who run baseball and the knuckleheads who make up the baseball players union would be if these two teams played for the World Series every year forever until they changed the system. $300 million payrolls. It's, a, no it's a novel concept, isn't it? Pay the most money for the best players and you make it to the World Series. It's like, wow, why doesn't every team think of that? You yeah, know? because every team doesn't have the local TV contracts that the Dodgers – and the Yankees have. Yeah. So, well, 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 how is that fundamentally different than the rules that were just changed? I'm going to get the details wrong here, but the rules were just changed with with high school so that the the kids can go to the schools with the better teams where they want to play. So you end up with these wildly uh, you know, the hundred to zero kind of scores that are happening. How is it different? You're talking about high school kids. They're, I know, but it's, it's the same. Not, it's fundamentally the same. Fun. It's, no, it's not. No, no, but it's fundamentally the same thing. High school, yeah. you're, you're getting the, the, the most talent to go to. You're, you're, you're stacking one team with the most talent. And I'm going to guess in pro sports, the most talent comes with the highest paycheck. So it's kind of the same thing. No, it's not even close. 
professional teams have a have an antitrust exemption. There's no such thing as that in the high school game. So because of the because of the way the professional sports are set up, it prevents competition. So if you set up an economic system that rewards the biggest markets, then smaller market teams never have a chance to win because you can't afford that same payroll. Football at, at the high school level, it'd be like there there's the restrictions of well, you have this the schools and your districts you can go you can go to, you would have to move and this but whereas for professional professional sports it's kind of just well sign the contract and you can play for the team. Yeah. Sort of thing. Well, I kind of agree with John in a way and, and not to hijack or still talk or the financial talk, but well, what he's doing. This getting is financial at is in, 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 in in high school now in West Virginia, you don't have to live in a district. You can just if I live, if my That's kid true. goes to Musselman and says, you know what, I, I'd rather play football at Hedgesville or or Hampshire. Or what, as long as they can find a ride, they can get there. So I think to John's point is there's a lot of talent around the state. Uh, that's congregating in on one team. So you may take an average player, or 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 maybe a, an average team's best player who's now leaving, or the best three or four players that's now leaving and going to another school. And down south, and my brother lives down there, and his son goes to Sissonville High School, which historically has been an average uh, middle uh, team in West Virginia. But all of their best players, they had five or six players that went to greener pastures, whether it was Herbert Hoover or other schools, and it has decimated that team. And they've won one game now since that. They haven't even won a game since the transfer rule. So they won one game the, the year of the before the transfer rule went into effect and competed, though. You know, they were 1-9 and nine and not a very good team, but they competed. And now they're losing games 60-14 to 14 and – 55 to 12 and 70 to nothing and that's been the case since that rule went into effect and i think that story is is ringing out across the state and i think that's john's point with baseball because of money they're congregating on one team but in high school sports in west virginia now that rule that i was initially in favor of but i, I didn't foresee the the problems that it would bring about initially i was in favor of it now i'm not but his point is, is now talent is congregating in one or two teams in, in the area. And I think that's his point. So from that standpoint, it's a horrible it's point. You can't equate high school sports to yes, professional can. sports, Phil. Yes, you can. No, you can't. What he's saying, Just because you're saying it doesn't mean you can, Phil. In, in one area. Talent is congregating on, to one team in high school, and they're congregating. And I don't pay attention to baseball, but they're congregating it's, to teams in baseball. It's fundamentally different. It's not fundamentally different. <laughs> it's not totally, fundamentally different. Totally, that's right. No, it's fundamentally different. It's you, don't, you don't have to Talent serve out your rookie contract in high school. No, you don't, to get, it, it, you don't, you don't just get to come right out of high school baseball and go play for the Yankees. You have to be drafted or signed. And, and, know, and they, then after their first contract, they can pay them and they can go wherever they want. Yes, after their so first contract. There's no first okay, contract in high school. Now. There's no first contract in okay. high school. Well, yeah, there could be a freshman year, and then I realize I'm good and I'm leaving. Well, it's not a, so contract. a contract, Rob. Your no. point, it's not a contract, your... but still, his point is con talent is congregating. It's for different reasons. So, yeah, which is to I, your point, and that, I see what they're getting at, Rob. They're, they're both they're... Dylan. Don't give in. <laughs> that was your point, Rob. <laughs> they're is, both is wrong. Argue. Your point was that the lack. Anything to argue with about the Steelers? <laughs> we agree about the Steelers, so he's picking a fight. <laughs> I didn't pick a fight. I'm telling you how it is. <laughs> Your point was that the lack of a salary cap is is putting all the talent on a couple of teams, and that's and, and that's making it unfun for mm -hmm. other teams. It's the same point. No, it's Take not the, unfun. Well, it, it, if it's unfun, the teams go down. It's right? a competitive disadvantage, so you could because you cannot spend and it money kills the sport. You don't have it. Kills the sport. Okay. Oh, say. This is like who's on first. It's the same. It's the same thing. The same so yeah. In principle, no, it's the same thing. It's, it's just not. one is with money. It's it's about the talent. You just have to pay the talent in in this professional. Is, this this is a discussion about an economic system, which at its basis eliminates half the league from competing for a championship in a league that is protected by the federal government of the United States of America. 
it's an economic oh, argument. It it's not an argument about talent congregation, congregation and acquisition. That's a it, well, that's that is a byproduct of the economic talent. system that's in place. Well, in the NFL, the NHL, and the NBA, where you have salary caps, you don't have this issue as much. The NBA has kind of figured a way around it, but you still at least have a salary cap that prevents every good player after one contract going to one team. Even in the NBA, you can't sign the 12 best players in the league and put them on your team. There's not enough money to fit them under your cap. You can do you that can in do baseball. That in high school football. You can do that in high school sports in West Virginia at the moment. But not because of economics. It has, but not because but of the economic system that's reason. in place. See, I thought it was a complaint that all the talent was congregating on one or two teams. So that's yes. what you started with. I hope right. that the Yankees and Dodgers play a World Series every single year so they will do something about this. All the talent is congregating on one or two teams because of the salary cap. John's point was they're doing the same thing to, to a degree in high school sports in West Virginia, but it's for different reasons. That's all we're saying. You're still both wrong. Anyway, let's move along. <laughs> I'm making. Well, my time's up now. I'm it, talking economics, and you're talking about high school transfers. Stuff. They're not even close to being on the same plan. Not even close. The Bill. outcome is the same. The outcome is the same. If you're saying a All salary cap would be a restriction on put a on salary player movement. Put a salary cap on high schools. Is that what you're saying, Phil? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. We're saying that talent is congregating on the same team, which is the same thing you were saying. This is like your 6.30 argument. I wish the Steelers would lose next week so we can argue about something else. <laughs> Who do we play next week? The Giants, like to, I think. You just like to pick – yeah, it's the Giants. It's scary. You just like to pick fights. I just like to me. tell you about the economic system of baseball. There's a movement right now among the fan base organizing. They're buying billboards and printing T-shirts to tell – uh, Bob Nutting to sell the team. There's actually one guy that spent money on a seat behind the plate at one of the baseball playoff games. He sat right behind home plate on camera that said sell the team in, in uh, Pirates colors. Maybe if Nutting will listen. If we're starting movements for we'll owners to be forced it. to sell teams, we start with Jimmy Haslam and the Cleveland Browns, and we move on from there. I kind of like when the Browns are bad. <laughs> that, you know what? That's fair. I, I, Rob and I can agree with Forget that. what I said. <laughs> See, Phil? Yeah. yeah. We agree. Uh, futures... Now that we agree, let's move to money. Futures markets are lower this morning, Phil, but I have a question for you, and that is what's going on with gold and silver right now? Gold is at 2752 bucks. It's uh, up eight-tenths of a percent. Silver's up 3% today. It's over $34 an ounce now. What's the deal? You're not going to get a good answer from me on gold and silver. We don't do a lot of alternative investments out of, out of our office. One of the reasons we don't is because the standard deviation of it looks a lot like a, uh, an equity, so the volatility of it can look, can look like an equity, but the returns look a lot like a bond, so we don't invest a lot in, in that, in that uh, field. However, it does tend to people see it, and notice how I said see it as a safe haven, so right now you have money fleeing bonds, and or I'm sorry, money coming into bonds and other uh, what you would refer to as safe ha havens because markets are at an all-time high. So typically gold and silver will do well at that crossover point when markets are at an all-time high and they're going to safer or greener pastures as they perceive it to be greener pastures. But as we look at our economic environment right now with earnings season well underway, and this week is a really heavy week, and I'm, I'm happy to focus on earnings for once uh, because that really is what drives the stock market and the stock market performance. You know, as the volatility comes out in between earnings, we're trading off of perception for what the environment will look like for companies and their ability to make money. But when the rubber hits the road, it is – does are these companies really profitable and what's their forward-looking guidance and so far in this earnings season although it's it's early but so far 79 percent of the companies have outperformed expectations and we kind of see the results of that supporting what our markets have done so far this year uh we see that we see that happening so far i did want to clear one thing up i said early uh to myself this morning i wasn't going to talk about Jerome Powell and CPI and economic because we got something different to talk about with corporate earnings and such. But I did want to clear up this because there was a listener that had that perceived and perception is reality that I was saying it was a good thing if prices in the grocery stores were high. And that's not what I was getting at at all. I was saying it's a good thing 
to have some inflation or low inflation, two two to three percent inflation. Inflation in itself is a sign of a healthy market. But when we measure inflation, we do have to remember this. What's most important to most consumers is at the at the grocery store and at the pump. That's what's most important to to all of us, me included. But the main CPI report that they're measuring and they're looking at removes the price of energy or fuel and groceries. So food and energy is removed from the main one they're looking at because of volatility. And the reason they remove that is because, and it's a very valid question that someone had asked last week too, well, why do they move that? That's what, remove that. That's what matters most. Well, they remove it because it's so volatile. It goes up and down so quickly, and they don't want to make long-term decisions based off of short-term uh, movement on the economic front. So that's not what I was getting at at all. I'd love to see prices go down. And prices can go down at the grocery store and at the pump and maintain a healthy economy. What we need to see is all those baskets of good, automobiles, housing costs, uh, travel, clothing, goods and services, all these things, and, and wages for that matter, can, to, to continue a healthy inflation. A healthy inflation isn't 9%. It's more like 2 to 3%, which is what we've been getting down to. So I did want to clear that up because if I said, hey, if this one person perceives that, it was probably perceived by a lot of people that financial fill thinks uh, prices at the grocery, uh, high prices at the grocery stores is a good thing. I don't think that <clears throat> at all. I think that inflation, uh, a moderate, a very small amount of inflation is healthy and is a good thing but not overwhelming prices at the grocery store. Not at all. I don't think that's good. But back to your original question with gold and silver, I'm not going to give you a good answer to that. I don't know why it's uh, it's ticked up so much other than it is often seen as a safe haven, and you do have a uh, maybe a quarter of a percent of economists right now that still believe that we're headed for a recession and we're headed for rough times. Really? So when that happens, they'll flee to bonds, gold, and silver. That's interesting. I think Tesla reports this week, don't they? They do, and I think it's on Wednesday, which is the biggest reporting day per capitalization because Tesla and IBM, I think GM reports on Tuesday or the day before. I could have Wednesday and Thursday mixed up. But it's a heavy, heavy week of reporting, and we want to see forward-looking guidance from Tesla because that robo-taxi is huge for Tesla. And, and what's our perception? Is that going to be profitable? How's that going to work out? You've got a lot of uh, critique, critiques coming out right now. Because apparently these robo taxis won't have steering wheels and gas pedals, and you think, well, what's the big deal about that? What's the resale of them? If you can only use them for a robo taxi, will you be able to sell them on the open market? Think of rental cars and, and, the, and the likes that you know they're used for rentals some, and then they're sold on the secondary market. They make their way to dealerships and auctions. Well, if they don't have steering wheels and gas pedals, is that a mistake? It, it won't be gas pedals, electric pedals, I guess. But would that be a mistake on the part of Tesla because then it would have no market past the robo-taxi part? Wednesday is indeed Tesla Day, Coca-Cola, T-Mobile, IBM, AT&T, uh, Boeing. That's an interesting group of yes. companies for Wednesday. Yes, it is. Wednesday is a big day on the earnings front. But if we can continue this overall movement where companies are exceeding expectations, that's going to support – and that's what we're really looking for right now. We've had a really, really good year, and I think it would be unrealistic to expect to have another 15. I'm not saying it won't happen, but to expect another 10, 15, 20 percent return for the rest of the year. Now, it's can we support these earnings that we've gotten so far this year in the face of all the all the positive economic information that we've gotten? Now we need to support it with company earnings because that is what it boils down to. Jeff Haddix is giving inter uh, financial advice in our comment section. Phil, let's see if you agree with it. Interest rates going down. Bonds should be going up. I think most should get out of bonds altogether. What do you think? Uh, no, I don't think you should get out of bonds altogether. They play an important role in a lot of people's uh, portfolio. It depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to a 22-year-old that's got an emergency fund set up and they're aggressively investing for their future for retirement, then, yeah, maybe bonds isn't the best place to be. But if you're age 70 and you're living off of your portfolio and now I've got a stream of income coming from my portfolio, you need less aggressive investments in there. And for, for those bonds, their purpose isn't to 
get aggressive returns, but their purpose is to hold their value and be a placeholder for money that we know is going to come to you at some point. And when uh, markets go south, when equity markets go south, we want a place for our, our money to that we can buy into that. We can rebalance and buy into that dip, and that's that, that placeholder that bonds hold. So now I don't agree that everyone should get out of them, but we are in, a, in an environment that uh, with interest rates going down, current bond values will go up. So if you've got a G fund, that's probably the most common. If you've got a G fund in your portfolio or bond exposure in your portfolio and you're looking at it since 2022, you're probably disappointed because rates had went up and then they stayed higher for longer. And now we're in it. And then we don't know at what, at what path and what rate that rates will fall. But as rates fall, current bond values will go up. You could just think of it. If I got a current bond that's paying 6% and now rates are 5%, I can get a premium for that bond on the secondary market. So the, the exact opposite. If you're a bond investor, then right now is the time to be in, in those bonds. But, again, we, we don't invest for uh, the timing of the market. We invest for each individual. But it should be a pretty good period. It could be choppy, but it should be a pretty good period for bonds while we're in this uh, declining interest rate environment. Looking at that list on Wednesday, IBM is part of that list. And years ago, IBM was one of those stocks that people would tell you to buy and hold forever. It was a tech company for its day, a growth company. But now nobody talks about IBM as an investment at all, Phil. Not much because it hasn't grown in the way of, like, say, Amazon and Apple and Google and Netflix. It hasn't had that type of growth. And I think this is a really interesting uh, uh, thing to do. If you go back, say, 10, 15, 20 years, go, go at each level and, and just Google it. it. It doesn't take long. The largest companies in the world, and you can see how our world has changed over that time frame just, just by capitalization. If you went 20 years ago and Googled the top the 10 largest companies in the world, it would look completely different today with the exception of probably Microsoft. The, I don't know that any other would be in there from 20 years ago. So that you, you can kind of see how our, our world has changed as far as companies and the largest companies and the most successful companies. And while IBM is still a good company and a successful company, it's nowhere near the top of that list like it used to be. Yeah, and that's one of the dangers of uh, being tech heavy is you never know what's going to go out of favor. Remember AOL? Yeah, <laughs> AOL, and it, there's a ton of them, especially from, from <laughs> 2000. And, you know, technology is a great place to be, but you have to be uh, you have to be very selective. So just to say, hey, I'm going to invest in all technology companies that would that that could fail you drastically. You need some sort of uh, strategy and drill downs inside of there to uh, to determine which companies you're going to be investing in. All right, Phil. About a minute to go here. Do you have a Ravens pick tonight that'll tick off uh, Dylan in any way? I, I I don't have a Ravens pick, but uh, I I do think, and I can, I'm going to remove emotion. I think they're a better football team than uh, Tampa Bay. I'm going to take the Ravens winning with a really good offense and ground and pound. 32 to 21. I'm picking the Ravens to win. That's going to change when they play in Pittsburgh, but I'm picking the Ravens to win tonight. And before we get off the phone, I would just like all the listeners to know that even though Rob and I get into deep discussions and arguments, there's nothing but love coming from the financial field to Rob Mario. You happy about that, and Dylan? Rob's very wrong. You're very wrong about what you said. John Gilstrap tries to get involved in sports ball. No wonder he doesn't. She chastises him every time he has an opinion. <laughs> Uh, I'll go with that. <laughs> the takeaway was that John was right. That's that's the takeaway. Stacy Burkett agrees with you. Right. Stacy Burkett said, "Get off right. it, Rob. They're right. I think you're all wrong. It was an economic argument, not about high school transfers." Hey, thanks, you Phil. Change the argument when you were wrong. Thank you, guys. Have, Have a good day. Yeah, okay, Phil. And uh, you can catch Phil each weekday morning at six thirty-eight. Uh, by the way, we played at seven thirty-eight. This is uh, this is Talk Radio WRNR Martinsburg and TV Ten. Back with more after this. Yeah.